Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you this little guy right here. This is the Mazarin Plow Sodbuster uh, Santos Wood and D2 model. Um, first off, though, I want to thank very much my Patreon patrons for uh, basically allowing me to just make random knife purchases. Um, it's a beautiful thing, and you know, so I, I just decided, you know what, hey, I'm gonna check out, see what I got available. Um, that th th that is absolutely a beautiful thing. Next thing, size comparison. This is um actually a reasonably big knife. Um, what we can see here against the uh, Ontario Rat number two and the Spydeco PM2. This is not a small knife. Um, it looks it, and certainly when I saw it on the uh, on Collect the Knives, where, the, where I bought it from on their website, it was like, wow, that's, that, that looks like a nice petite little thing. No, not not quite so much. Um, and so there's that. And then here it is against your Spydeco Delica. So you can see here, yeah, it's a reasonably sized knife here in terms of sharpened blade length. You're right in PM2 vicinity. Then finally, I want to compare it to... Um, the uh, Humble Open L0008. Um, and so you can see here, the Open L's got it bested very slightly in blade length, um, but it's relatively similar in size in most of the other ways. Handles about the same thickness, etc. So, um, and these are very close to compare anyways. Um, so there's that. Next thing, um, this guy, I think might actually, like I, I see models of this um, Plow Sodbuster elsewhere, but I think this particular configuration might be an exclusive to collect the knives um, with the D2 and something or another, but uh, if you're having trouble finding it, I think that might be the case. So there you go. Sorry, just wiping off the oil here so you can get a good sense of what's going on. Um, so there's that. And then finally, this is going to be a quick review because honestly, it's a quick knife. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that and talk about what I'm liking, what I'm not liking so much. On the good side to start with, what is always a nice thing? Look, um, I, I, I'm... There are many people in the world who are still consider knives to be uh, tools rather or uh, weapons rather than tools. Who are scared of them? And for some reason, a little bit of wood can actually be a. Uh, it can help to soothe. That. If you look at the handle, you're like, "Oh, this looks like something Grandpa would carry." That can actually have a real effect. I don't get it necessarily, but it's definitely a thing. And so this actually lends it a little bit of a nice approach. And honestly, it's a nice wood. It looks like a genuine style of wood. A Santos wood. I didn't even know Santos was a wood, but whatever it is, it looks pretty solid. So I, I like that very much. Next thing, ergonomically speaking, it's actually pretty nice in the hand. You definitely have sharp edges off of the inside here, but those could actually be cleaned up pretty effectively with some kind of a file or something like that. Um, but nevertheless, um, ergonomically, it works out pretty well. It, it's reasonably thick, and that actually fills the hand. It's designed well, and even if you choke up a little bit here, it still absolutely works, and so that's good. Next thing, this is pretty easy to pinch open. Um, not only is the nail nick well positioned to give you that extra traction, but it just, it pulls out nicely. Uh, this was something that I don't like nail nicks. Uh, it's something that never appeals to me particularly, and this one I didn't really feel like I needed to do that with. So um, I, I'm digging that very, very much. Next thing, this has some nice safety features. Um, the biggest one is that it has a half stop, meaning that if you are trying to shut the blade, it will stop right here in this vicinity, and then you have to push it again. Um, that helps to keep it from coming shot onto your hand, but the other big issue is that it's got this little area down here, this little unshop, and, and I understand that that's probably actually to keep the knife from hitting the inside of the liner when it closes, but nevertheless, um, you put your finger there, and this becomes very, very hard to have accidentally close on your finger. That's something I very much do appreciate. Um, it, it makes the knife just feel a little bit safer than uh, slip joints might otherwise do. Next thing, this has a reasonably nice blade. It is a D2 steel, as you can see written right here, D2 Italy. Bod meat is actually reasonably thin behind the edge. The stock on it is reasonably thin. It cuts. It's absolutely a beautiful thing. If you are just looking for a reasonable D2 tool steel blade, you know what? It works pretty well. And so that's a nice thing. Then finally, on the bad or on the good side, that is, it is cheap. This is a thirty dollar knife. Um, that thirty dollars makes this a whole different world. If this was selling for eighty bucks or a hundred bucks, absolutely not. But at thirty bucks, yep, okay, sure. And so for thirty bucks, that, that that's a beautiful price point. So um, to me at least, that's what's good. Um, it is cheap. It is uh relatively. It's got a nice blade with thin stock, thin edge, nice safety features. It's easy to pinch open. It's nice in the hand, and the wood is always a nice thing. 
On the bad side, it is pinned together, but it's a traditional that's reasonably common there. Next thing, you can see it is oozing lubricant. Part of this is because I've lubricated it a little bit, but that's definitely a factor. This little area right here scrapes the lubrication off of the blade each time you close it, so there will always be little bits of black gunk coming out of there, or at least until you really, really clean the thing out. Um, next thing, it is very thick. Um, we are coming in here. I mean, if we compare this to, like, the Delica here, this is a beefy little knife. Um, it's definitely one that you throw in the pocket, and it's like, is that your, uh, Mazarine, uh, Plow Sodbuster Santos wooden D2, or are you just happy to see me? It's, it's definitely up there. It's also a little larger than I expected. I mean, it's fine. It's not a, it's not a big deal, and if we measure up the blade length here, we're coming in under three and a half, but it's definitely a little bit of a bigger knife than I thought. I, I kind of pictured this being a smaller slip joint, but instead, no. It's coming in at 2.66 ounces, so it's not particularly heavy, but it's definitely a little bit on the bigger side. Next thing, it has a relatively light pull. That can actually be nice, um, but, you know, it's definitely not the most secure feeling thing ever. That's offset a little bit by having this guy, but it's a thing. Um, it is also, by the way, a very unsmooth action. I mean, you might be able to hear... Yeah, that is about as good as it feels. Um, not necessarily a great thing. I imagine that will smooth out over time. If you carry this, use it every day. After a while, it'll probably get much smoother. But at the, at the moment, out of the box, not super impressed by that action. Next thing, this guy has relatively sharp liners. Not only in the back here, but also on the front. Um, you, you feel the sharpness of these liners in every damn position. It's not necessarily something I particularly enjoy. I, I feel like I could definitely skip that. One other thing I could like to see on this, guy is speaking of shop is this shop corner in the front here i would very much have preferred had they kind of angled this down a little bit had they rounded that off to the front because not only would it make it easier to do a pinch kind of cut um as is often a helpful thing because this is really a nice little folding steak knife if nothing else um but it also just these corners here are needlessly sharp they're not like cut you open shop but they, they're just uncomfortable so i would like to see that skipped um next thing or uh seen that rounded that is next thing the blade on this guy wasn't super sharp out of the box. Mind you, it's dropped up okay. I just hit it with a sharpening stone, and it worked fine. Um, and that's not the biggest sin, because if you, uh, well, if you're a knife enthusiast, you should be able to sharpen a knife. It's a straightforward issue. Um, but there you go. And then finally, on the bad side, as you've probably already noticed, finishing is not necessarily a thing here. I mean, the finishing of this knife is somebody looking at it and saying, yeah, it's finished. Um, and that, that that's about really it. But you can see here, there's all kinds of scrapes. This is directly out of the box. I have not liked like thrown this into traffic or anything like that. Um, it's got all these scrapes here. This little area doesn't match up. This is really not a, um, I mean, the line, it doesn't even connect in the back here. It, it's very, very, very clear that the amount of finishing desired here was the knife needs to open and close and that that's done. That's it. Little bits of, you know, black carbon gunk in the back there. You can clean these things off, but still, it's just not super amazing. Um, the finishing on this knife is really unimpressive. And then in the back, when the knife is closed, this the back spring is even, isn't even flush. And that's a shop area. I just, this is, again, something, if you were to buy this for 30 bucks as a project knife and really smooth out, the, you know, sand this part down a little bit, you know, file off this bronze a little bit to make things a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer on the inside there. There were a lot of things you could do to manually make this knife better with a bit of elbow grease, but unfortunately, you're the one who's going to be doing them. You are the one who's going to be finishing this knife because they really didn't. For 30 bucks, okay, but still, do keep that in mind. You are going to be getting something that feels profoundly, well, unfinished. Uh, and that's something you want to deal with. Um, so, uh, uh, to me, on the bad side, the, the finishing isn't a thing. The blade wasn't super sharp. The line is definitely sharp. Um, there's a relatively light pull. It's uh, thick, a little big, uh, and it oozes lubricant. Then it is pinned together, so making it not ooze that lubricant is not straightforward. Um, on the final conclusion front, this is a knife that is very firmly in the, yeah, this had better be cheap category. Um, it is pinned together, it's thick, it's sharp in all the non-blade places, and the finishing process appears to have not really super happened. But the thing is, it is cheap. And that actually makes it much more interesting. You've got wood handles here, decent safety features, a D2 blade, and a $30 price tag. You know what? Okay. That's fine. And for a lot of people who might be interested in something a little bit more on the cheap side, 
this actually offers something interesting. Um, the clear competition, of course, is the open L here. Um, on the open L, you do get a rudimentary lock here that prevents the blade from shutting at all. Um, and that's a nice thing, at least for many people. Um, you get a price tag that is even cheaper than this guy, but you also get a less satisfying action, even more so. Um, on this open L here, you get a, a different set of steel possibilities and a style that you may or may not like. I mean, like it or not, open L's have exactly one stand. This one's been rounded a little bit to give me an easier open. But nevertheless, open L's have exactly one sort of style, and uh, this is, offers you something else. And of course, there are a lot of good modern folders at the same price here. I mean, the, the, the one that comes to mind for me always is like the CRKT LCK. It's a very similar sort of size, um, and it's also a very similar sort of price point, uh, but it's a very, very different knife. Um, hard to get a whole lot more different between the two or like your Ontario Rat 2, etc., um, which you can have in D2 for not a whole lot more money. I mean, there are lots of options at this price range, but the thing is still... I can see this having a buyer, a traditional lover who's on a budget. Look, if you want a new traditional knife and you don't have a whole lot of money, this is not a bad way to go. Maybe somebody who wants to try a slip joint in their life, but without going too deep on the price scale. I mean, there are lots of beautiful slip joints out there, but they tend to be a little pricier. This gives you something pretty inexpensive. Or maybe somebody who just wants a folding steak knife for a camping trip or something like that. Although... Okay, that'd be a weird thing, whatever. I, either way, I can see somebody buying this and actually being pretty happy with it. So it's not a gem, it's not perfection, but it's not trying to be. And for the price, you know what? It is absolutely fine. And you know what? That's all it really has to be. So there you go. I hope this was interesting to you that I didn't sod bust this guy's chops too much or plow it into the ground and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. Bye now.